it's the womb that gives life to the tribe and see that's why you you know it just I gotta use the bathroom real quick. You can, you can watch this video here and see what this guy says. Every bullying sit there and badge. I, I don't get it. I, I, I cannot fathom why these people feel the need to sit there and badger a young girl until she feels the need to take her life. Of course, like with every bullying situation I read about or hear about, there's always the people who say, well, she was just too weak. She needed to be stronger. Bullying is a rite of passage and it helps you become a grown-up. No, it doesn't. You know, if you were bullied to that extent, would you be so willing to say that it's a rite of passage? No. And you know, I'm damn angry at people who think that children should be bullied just so they're strong enough to become an adult. Because I can tell you from personal experience that that, that scar left over from bullying never goes away. And it always comes back to haunt you, no matter how healed you think you are. My heart goes out to this poor girl's family and friends because not only do they have to deal with the suicide of somebody that they cared about, but now they have to deal with the comments from these people who are sitting there and saying that she deserved what happened to her. Nobody should have to even hear those comments because they're not true. Nobody deserves to die like that, and nobody deserves to be bullied until they want to take their own life. I just want anybody out there to know, who may watch this, that if you're feeling suicidal, or if you're being bullied, you're not alone. And there are people out there who can help you, and that there are people out there who are there for you. And there are people out there who understand. Yeah, I just want to say that dude makes a good point, and he's pretty cool. I mean, he's mm, well, kind of a little overly emotional, but, you know, he's, you know, at least he's trying to de-escalate the problem with uh, these kinds of things but you know um yeah okay and wh what's this about That thing uses silicone or something like that. It's made out of some kind of different material. I never thought I would be part of it because really it's just for the, like the big popular people. Some kids thought it'd be funny just to put me in there as a joke to make fun of me. One year some kids decided it'd be funny to kick me in my shins with steel toe boots because I was different. You know, I felt like I wasn't worthy. It's like why I even be a part of this community, this world, if if I'm just going to be tossed around like basically a piece of trash. It takes a lot of guts. <laughs> fuck! At least you weren't disposable. I mean, fuck! At least you weren't sent over to fucking die. You know, like these guys were. Like this guy in this picture. I mean, fuck! I mean, god damn. You should be so lucky. I mean... More pathetic fucking bullshit. Steel toe! Okay... You know, we always hear this exaggerating. Who wears steel toe besides me? And maybe construction workers. I wear steel toe boots because I work around furniture and heavy objects and I deal with a pallet jack and, like, other heavy stuff. Well, furniture, um, you know, uh, sometimes appliances and just overall dangerous stuff and i wear steel toes so it's a less likely trip to the doctor you know i mean like 
you know, I also wear boots because I, um, I'm less likely to get a twisted ankle, which, again, is less likely to cause me to go to the doctor because, you know, that sign, that OSHA or whatever sign or whatever it is up there on the wall says accidents are avoidable. You know, like, <laughs> oh, man, oh, that'd be a great one. Um, because uh, accidents are avoidable. Oh, yeah. Yep. We uh, we got something like this in our uh, workplace right here. Accidents are avoidable. And um, yep, right there in the workplace. You see this right there? Yeah, rape can be avoidable too, you know? Maybe you should like not go down dark alleys like at nighttime by yourself, you know, kind of stuff. Uh, so, you know, OSHA and, and, and other entities, they understand that the accidents are avoidable and, and that sort of thing and other circumstances can be avoided, you know, it, it's, it's a mindset you got to get yourself into. It means be more careful, you know, and, um, and then, uh. But no, women just want to be more irresponsible. You know, they just want to, you know, they, they, they just want to um, have the world accommodate them some more. It's like, well, I should be able to wear a mini skirt in a bad neighborhood and walk down gang uh, territory alleys in the middle of the night and Wadra well, shouldn't be raped. Well, exactly. You should not be raped, but at the same time, rape does happen and you're aware of that. So you need to still take precautions. It's like, it's like nobody should get in a car crash, but that still doesn't mean that the road is not dangerous. You know, that's why they put airbags in cars, safety belts, all kind of other safety, you know, crumple zones, all kind of other safety features because, yeah, the road is a dangerous place. Y you know what I'm saying? Like, they can put all kind of safety features in a vehicle, but that's no substitute for safe driving. You know, people should still drive safe. You know what I'm saying? I mean, fuck. I mean, goddamn. So pathetic. It takes a lot of guts. World, if if I'm just gonna rid of this, I felt like I wasn't worthy. He's like, why I even fell to boots? Because I was different. You know, I felt like I wasn't worthy. He's like, why I even be a part of this community, this world, if if I'm just gonna be tossed around like basically a piece of trash? It takes a lot of guts, <laughs> a lot of guts to do that. Well, well. At least you weren't accused of being a contradiction of your own existence. More stuff about Whitney Crop. Bullied teen speaks. Yeah, we gotta see this. She's just fucking milking this shit. I mean, fuck. Once again, more shiny rocks for women to wear and feel good about themselves at the expense of the man's hard work. And, time. and at the expense of men and families in Africa who have to suffer so that women can have these shiny rocks to feel good about themselves with. And dazzling deals. This is how to gift. This is Sears. 
right now to the story of how a cruel school prank has morphed into something much bigger and better than any high school girl could dream of. It's the story of Whitney Crop. Whitney has endured her fair share of bullying over the years, so you can imagine her shock when she was nominated to the homecoming court. But it was all a joke, and it crushed her. But that's far from the end of the story. CNN's Chris Welch is in West Branch, Michigan. Fred, let me tell you, I had a chance to spend some time with 16-year-old Whitney Crop, and she really is a cool teenager. And She's a teenager who's got a lot of guts, because let me tell you what happened. Earlier this month, her class here at Ogemaw Heights High School picked her to be the sophomore class representative at the homecoming royalty court. Now, she was shocked, and she was shocked because, as she says, she's an outcast here at school. She's not one of the so-called popular kids, so she really couldn't believe it. But when she got home, she found out from some friends that it was all a cruel joke, that kids voted for her as a prank. She spent the night in tears. She was hurt. She even tells me she was suicidal. But the story does have a happier ending. She is now deciding, after some pushing from her friends, she was hurt. She even tells me she was suicidal. But. Oh, my gosh. Basically because of rejection. And, and see, that's. That's exactly what makes a woman feel like she wants to die because she feels insignificant and is not validated. Now, this could be worse. She could be accused of being a child pumper or some kind of stalker rapist, abusive asshole, and then go to prison on a false rape allegation or a false sexual harassment allegation and then be beat half to death in prison. Everybody hate you. And then when you get released out of prison <clears throat> because the rape allegation is proven false, either through evidence or because the, the accuser recanted their story, either case, you get out of prison and people still think you're a rapist. Matter of fact, then comes out all these conspiracy theories about how the justice system is corrupt and that politicians are paid off, and and that, you know, prison wardens are on the take, and all this other kind of shit, all these weird, bizarre, irrational theories to try to make sense of why a man got released from prison on a rape charge or whatever. I mean, like, and y you know what? I mean, Whitney Crop, you... You're just proving my point. I mean, you really are. Because, I mean, apparently that's how you hurt a girl. Is is just to, you know, make her feel insignificant. And what's one of the best ways to do it? Just ignore them. Just give them their space like they always bitch about saying that they need. You just give them their space and they'll get all pissed off and feel neglected and insignificant, just like what happens to men, but men are expected to suck it up. <clears throat> and, you know, and just reject a woman and then she'll feel all pissed off and feel like, you know, she doesn't want to exist anymore and all that. It just shows how weak and pathetic are that women are, that they can't even deal with the shit that men go through. And look, look, this comes from CNN. I mean, shit, I mean, this got blown up, I mean, way out of proportion and kicked on up to the national level. You know, on the Channel News 7 or whatever that they were on, or Channel 9 earlier, that was local news for, like, her town or city, the nearest city or whatever. Now, this is covered by CNN. It's national. That goes all across the United States. <clears throat> you know, I mean, like, and then through the CNN website, that could go all around the world. That, that you know, that some girl in some small town or medium-sized town or whatever, um got, you know, got bullied and, you know, and got her self-esteem crushed. This just, this just, this just proves my point that women get all freaking uppity about the most petty fucking insignificant bullshit, especially compared to what a man will go through. 
And and women are like pretty eager to put themselves in this situation and play the role of a victim. Now, for the first year, I kept my whole suicide attempt really hush hush. Like <clears throat> basically nobody knew about it at first. Then I made a video just to keep track, you know, the one year anniversary and all that. I uploaded it months ago. Matter of fact hold on. Um I uploaded that video months before anybody even knew about it. And I just decided not too long ago, you know, I think it was in December, uh, it may have been November of 2012, to, um, you know, to make it visible and um, as an example of how men will, you know, how men get affected by things and to prove a point that, you know, of what, what men go through so other men can see this video and relate to it, you know, <clears throat> and and have an understanding of the larger picture. And it's just, you know, met with more bullying, you know, and more shit, you know. So it, it, fo it, it functions as like an example. And, uh, you know, I'm... I'm kind of actually glad it turned out like this because it just turns into fuel. It it just fuels me even more. You know, I, I don't I don't want people to actually do the whole Whitney crop thing of like giving me a bunch of shit. I just want people to understand, you know, I don't well when I say shit, you know, I don't want I don't want a whole bunch of sympathy. I don't want a whole bunch of gifts or whatever. Because that just turns it into what she did, which is just, you know, a whole big way to get extra cookies. And I don't want that. I'm glad it turned out more of the way it actually did to where people just basically become indifferent or prove my point even further that if you're a guy and, and you suffer from something you're kicked down even further uh, sometimes uh you know like they say come back with your shield or on it you know uh don't come back wounded you know how dare how dare a man be you know a uh, a uh, uh, drag on the system and all that it's like, you know, come back in come back in perfect health or come back dead, you know. Don't be uh don't be dead weight. <clears throat> That's how it's regarded. You know. Uh we as a society rather spend resources on a female than a male. We rather a male provide resources than to use them or, or than for than for women to provide resources. And it just shows. It, it's the same old caveman days. Just because we have skyscrapers and airplanes and high-speed internet and flat panel LED televisions that, that, that will do 3D imagery, just because we have all this technology does not mean that the caveman days are over. Okay, and you need to understand that. Men and women are still psychologically very much the way they were in the caveman days, okay? And you need to understand that. You know, but, you know, you people are so superficial. A lot of you people out there are so shallow. You only understand form instead of substance. And just because the current form is that we have high-rise apartment bu buildings... And, you know, and, and have fiber optic internet and have cell phones and have video game consoles that play Blu-ray movies. You think that, that everything's all changed and all of a sudden we're not cavemen up or cave men and women up inside our heads. 
You just don't even know. <clears throat> you just don't have a clue. But, you know, I mean, basically, the way people treated me, you know, in this whole suicide thing ensures that there will be subsequent videos and ranting about the subject. <laughs> Actually, it would have been better off if people, you know, let's say if people watched the video and just said nothing, you know, and, and but no, they, they, they just, you know, it's, they just come up and put more fuel on the fire and think that they're going to put the fire out. I mean, fuck. I mean, how fucking, how, how, how mentally ill is that? I mean, it is. I mean, it's like, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, it's like people, you know, it's like there's a house fire and it's, and like and then showing up with a tanker truck full of gasoline trying to put out the house fire with a tr with a tanker truck full of gasoline. I mean, that's not going to put out the fire. It's going to make it worse. But you know, some people and that's a metaphor. I just used a metaphor. You know, there's some people that don't even don't even understand how all that works. So let's watch some more of this. The story does have a happier ending. She is now deciding, after some pushing from her friends and family, that she's going to go through with it. She's going to stand up there tall, proud of who she is. She's going to be there at the homecoming coronation and the dance. She's got the support of a lot of people. She's got a Facebook page that's 96,000 strong and growing. And she's got local businesses and community members donating her dresses, her hairdo, her meals, everything. I sat down with her yesterday. Here's a little bit of what she said about how she describes this experience. I'm just overwhelmed. I'm like, so many people care and they want this to end. You know, I thought before, you know, oh, no one cares about me. I thought, you know, not even my whole brother and sister care, but they're proving me they do care. The world is proving that they will not really care about me, but they care about the situation. So like, I'm happy. I'm really honored. The actual homecoming coronation will happen tonight at the football game, and Whitney tells me her dad will walk her out on the football field. She will be holding her head high, and she will have more confidence than ever as the community, and really the world, Fred, watch. How incredible. Thanks so much, Chris. And you can read more about uh, Whitney's ascension, her experience, plus leave your own comments on CNN.com. <laughs> oh, my God, it never ends. So because she whined and fussed and threatened to get all suicidal, then <clears throat> then she eventually gets her way and becomes homecoming queen anyway. I mean, this just goes to show when women fuss and bitch and, and whine and play the role of the victim, they know they will get what they want. And why does this girl think that her own brother and family... Uh, didn't care about her. I mean, why would she get those thoughts in her head? She's got some deep-seated issues. Um, I'm confident that her family really and always did care about her because they're family. It's just she's probably emo and probably has all these self-esteem issues and all these other emotional dysfunctionalities. And... And thinks that, like, nobody cares about her. <clears throat> and all that. I mean, of course people are going to care about her. You know? I mean, for multiple reasons. I mean, you know, to, to oversimplify the thing. You know, in the general sense, it's because she's a woman and has, or a female and has a vagina. I mean, well, that's another mother out there in society keeping the tribe alive. And, and only 16 years old. I mean, 16 years old. I'm twice her age. So she's acted like she's had this whole life full of heartbreak and misery and suffering. And she's only been alive for 16 years. Imagine what it's like for somebody my age. I'm twice her age. Matter of fact, she's 16 years old. Presumably, she was born in 1995 or maybe 1996. For that whole time period that she's been alive, that's the time period that I've been suffering. 
and <clears throat> actually my suffering started a few years before she was born. I don't I don't think she really knows pain and suffering. Now I'm not the most badass person out there. There are more people who who are actually more hardcore than me. But I'm just using myself as an example of what's out there. <clears throat> and it just I can't, I just can't have sympathy. Now, at one time, I would have had sympathy. I mean, I, I remember how I used to be, and, and I, you know, but, but I'm on the other side of that wall now. I, I just, I just can't feel sympathy for this girl. I, I just, I've been treated so differently in the past. I just can't relate. Especially over not being popular. You know, like I remember both of the times I was I had a really op, a really significant opportunity at being on the honor roll. You know, when I was her age, <clears throat> <clears throat> you know, in school, I had a uh, you know I'd had bad grades pretty much most of my life. You know, poor grades in school, and I had a real good chance at getting on the honor roll. And competing with my sister, who always got good grades. And people never figured out why, you know, I was as smart as I am, but got bad grades in school. And so this one year, well, I was 1995, 96, so I was around this girl's age. And, uh, you know, Whitney Crop, I was around her age. And I had a really good chance at getting on the honor roll. You know, I had... A uh, few A's and mostly B's. And, uh, <clears throat> and um, that's how my grades were this one year. And I had a real strong chance at making the honor roll. And that's a goal I really, really tried hard for. And, uh, well, two days before the end of the grading period, everything's missing from my locker. Even the trash, even all the wadded up junk and garbage that it was in my wall locker because I was not a very clean person, you know. Even, first of all, all my books came up missing. <clears throat> um, all of my books, um, which my books had some of my homework assignments in there. I missed one homework assignment, got me a C. And I missed the honor roll <clears throat> that semester. I missed the honor roll. And it was just right at the very end of the grading period, and I didn't have enough time to make up the grade. And it was just weird because everything in my locker was stolen, even the trash, even the wrappers and paper wads and junk and garbage was stolen and missing out of my locker. <clears throat> And later, several months later, I found my books and got most of them back. Um, let's see. Well, here comes next semester. You know, the second uh, semester and all that in school. And, you know, here I got all B's and I think I got like maybe one A. Okay, so I'm still trying there. Okay. Well, what, like the day before or was it anyway... Just with just within a couple days, uh, before the end of the grading period, two of my artwork assignments come up missing from like the teacher's freaking thing where the teacher had all the artwork stuff. I'm not saying the teacher did it because the students had access to it also. Uh, two of my artwork assignments from art class came up missing. You know. And I didn't have enough time to make up the grade. I got a C minus. Both times I had an opportunity at the honor roll. Shot down. Because my assignments come up missing. You know, maybe it was an accident. Maybe it was a misplacement. Whatever. The point is, I tried really hard for the goal of getting good grades so I can feel esteemed and accomplished. 
and I, I missed it. The opportunity was, you know, was taken from me, whether it was from coincidental, coincidental circumstances or whether somebody did it as a prank or whatever. <clears throat> you know, like, it may have been an accident or it may have been some kind of hostile intention. I don't know. But the point is, I know what the result was, that... I didn't get on the honor roll because each, you know, each time it always occurred close enough to the grading period, that critical time period, but always, you know, always close enough at the end where I didn't have enough time to make up the assignment and, and make and therefore, you know, get the better grade. Happened two semesters in a row. I didn't feel all suicidal. I didn't feel hostile. I felt cheated. I felt deprived of my hard work. But I didn't get all fucking uppity about it and, like, you know, want to kill myself. Whatever. Well, let's check out one last video and then I gotta go. Let's see which one. It's CNN. We may have watched that one already. Here's ABC News. <clears throat> To turn to another inspiring high school story. It started out as a mean-spirited plot that could have been lifted right from the script of the movie Mean Girls. A 16-year-old bullying victim is nominated for her high school's homecoming court as a cruel prank. But this brave girl managed to turn the tables on her bullies. It was the whirlwind weekend that wasn't supposed to be. The Hummer limo last night at the homecoming dance. The standing ovation on the football field. Sophomore Whitney Crow wasn't a cruel plot that could have been lifted right from the script of the movie Mean Girls. A 16-year-old bullying victim is nominated for her high school's homecoming court as a cruel prank. But this brave girl managed to turn the tables on her bullies. It was the whirlwind weekend that wasn't supposed to be. The Hummer limo last night at the homecoming dance. The standing ovation on the football field. Sophomore Whitney Crop sealing her place on the homecoming court of her upstate Michigan high school. Just last week, Crop found out her nomination for homecoming queen was a complete prank engineered by bullies. The 16-year-old was so upset she thought about killing herself. I had actually thought about suicide. I thought I wasn't worthy at Ogama Heights at all. The bully teen didn't let it get the best of her. With the help of family and friends, a Support Whitney Facebook page was set up, receiving 120,000 likes. Her story touching hundreds of thousands of people around the country and world. I think it's awful what happened to her, and you just want to know that there, you want to let her know that there are people here for her. And of course you think it's horrible that it happened to her, because you're probably picturing and imagining if the same thing happened to you. You don't want to be put in that same situation. You don't want to feel insignificant like that. Matter of fact, I don't know, maybe the Femetheus might be on my side about this. this is like, because this is one of those first world problems and all that. You know what? Uh, if the Femetheus is watching, you know, hit me up on this stuff because, you know, this stuff's just pathetic, you know? <clears throat> I mean, you know, Femetheus in her latest video made a really good point about how, um, about how feminist, uh, about how feminists bitch about the most insignificant stuff and rally around the most pathetic shit, while at the same time there are more pressing issues and more significant things that people should be concerned about. And that's a video that the Femetheist made uh, recently, this past week or whatever. And I thought it was fairly good. I mean, now, it is still gynocentric, and that's what gets on my nerves, but it gets closer to the actual point, you know, and takes a better stance than what a lot of feminism typically does touching hundreds of thousands of people around the country and world. I think it's awful what happened to her and you just want to know that there, 
We want to let her know that there are people here for her. In a rally of support, local businesses stepped in, offering her a makeover and donating everything from prom dresses to jewelry to anti-bully t-shirts. Flowers came in from as far away as California. On Friday at halftime of the homecoming football game, she bravely took the field to accept the nomination, her father walking her down the aisle in the ceremony, the opposing team showcasing banners and signs in support. I'm surprised that the team that we are going against is actually supporting me. It's, wow, that's overwhelming. I, seriously, I have no words for this right now. And though Croft didn't win homecoming queen, her courage takes the crown. Kids that are bullying you, do not let them bring you down. Stand up for what you believe in and go with your heart and go with your gut. She won a lot more than a crown. Very she cool. She confidence, is courage, yeah. and she looked beautiful. Yeah. She's very brave. Yeah, very cool. Is. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> so validate the girl. Uh, who, so... Oh, so what they want you to do is to validate the girl who's got self-esteem issues and is willing to use suicide as a fucking hostage method to get what she wants. I mean, you know, whether or not she did that intentionally, that's still the result. Okay, and this happens a lot. Now, if, uh, I'm going to make a point that if men and women... Uh, or male and female were both um, uh, had the same treatment in equivalent circumstances, um, then I could relate to this girl, you know, if things were treated equally, <clears throat> then I could feel sympathy for the girl. But I, I can't. I can't because, because it's not. Because it's not treated equally. It's not treated the same. I mean, like... You know, I remember times when, like, you know, I wasn't as desirable by, you know, the school or the other students or whatever, and I just kept to myself and, you know, dealt with it, you know, play some video games, go out in the woods and, like, ride the go-kart. I mean, like, you know, like, there's other stuff that people can be doing. You know, <clears throat> like, but I just sucked it up and dealt with it. Is that because I'm a stronger and therefore superior person? I mean, I was not originally going to go there and, and, and believe in that, but like the way men and women are both treated in situations, equivocal situations, I mean, it just, it just says that. You know, I mean, you know, the whole consensus is, oh, let's, let's accommodate the girl even more because this affects her even because, because, you know, this has the potential to make her feel even worse and be even more devastating on her than, than if it happened to a guy and we got to do this stuff and, and we got to make sure she's marketable and all this other kind of stuff. And it's like, oh my gosh, I mean, just. I wish the disposable human doing was here, cause he would, uh, uh, he would, uh, he would really understand how to deal with this, and he would, he would offer more commentary and analysis. But I just want to make this video to show the difference in how men and women are treated. You know whenever they feel suicidal, and especially because men and women typically feel suicidal over different things. Um, that's what I wanted to make this video about. And yeah, I did have a relative, um, um, you know, uh, not in my nuclear or immediate family, <clears throat> but I, a cousin, um, who was pretty much my same age, you know, she's born, you know, a few, she's a few months younger than me. And, you know, and as a cousin, she was, you know, fairly close to me, you know, uh, um, one of my childhood cousin types of friends and all that. Um, and, uh, me and my sister, we used to play in the yard and just 
all that with, you know, this cousin and her sister. And that's just because these particular cousins were pretty much our same age. And, um, yeah, so we were fairly close and all that. And she was almost kind of like a best friend. Well, yeah. She killed herself um, back in March of 2009. It was almost four years ago. Um, and uh, she was one of those that didn't want to be lonely and that sort of thing. And um, I don't know, she had some stress problems and whatever. And um, somebody, you know, said some things. And um, said, if you want to kill yourself, fine. Um, I don't want anything to do with this. But they left a pistol nearby and walked out of the room a couple minutes later there was a mess and she was dead and so I do know some about this and uh it it affected our family and all that just there was some legal stuff ongoing with the um with the uh, person involved in who may have encouraged it a bit or or nudged it a bit um because the state law um, forbids anyone to encourage suicide or assist or whatever. And, but that's what happened in this situation. So it got to, it became a legal issue. Um, and, um, so that's another thing that pisses me off about this kind of stuff. Uh, I don't want to be like Whitney Crop and just get a bunch of fucking fame and fortune. Well, not a bunch of fortune, but, I mean, she didn't get rich off of it, but she got a bunch of free stuff and all kind of positive attention, and that's not what I'm going for. I just want people to understand um, that there are things that hurt men exclusively uh, and society is very eager to inflict that type of harm. And that's why I made my one-year anniversary suicide video. And then the type of comments that came in is um, really motivating me to... Um, to really um, uh, really persist in my efforts to do what I do and um, yep so uh, I'm gonna end this video for now it's been a few hours long I am a man slave and I run the Validation Warfare YouTube channel. And I am the co-founder of an entity that's kind of like a think tank for elite MIGTO philosophy. And um, I'm just going to have to end the video now.